how much is this bothering you guys? Because there was a lot, you know, throughout the day I read the different, th this whole case here, the, the Pluff case, is this something that is being a little blown out of proportion because people sort of feel there's a tit for tat here? Look, they're going after Mitt Romney on this tax returns things. It's ridiculous and it's on its face ridiculous. But, you know, maybe Republicans are trying to score more points than they should here? Or is this the case that illustrates the broader problem, which is this administration promises one thing, does another, and lobbyists are running amok? I mean, where, where it's do... the latter. It's clearly the latter because this is, not, this is not an isolated incident. You just showed a list of all of these people who were not supposed to be uh, lobbyists in the most transparent administration, and we were going to clean up Washington. And it's so incestuous, it's ridiculous. I mean, look at what Jeffrey Immelt with GE and what they did, and he was part of it. And you know who they had on their on their economic business council. These are on all of the back you know cronyism, backdoor cronyism that's going on in this administration. That the media has not really done a good job of exposing over the last three and a half years. And now you know with a campaign coming up, it's something salacious. And then on top of what this administration's policy has been toward Iran is concerning. We left the, the Obama not we the Obama administration left those folks in Iran that were rioting and that were, you know, uh, coming up against that, that stolen election, they left them high and dry to die in the streets in Iran. And then here you have one of his ca top campaign advisors doing business with something in Iran. It but just raises the question of what are we doing and what is the policy and where, what's the influence? There's something that uh, really scares me about this. And I think that when you step back, this is really not as bad as some of the other things that have happened within this administration. We've learned over the past uh, few months uh, from the emails that have been released uh, that Jim Messina, that David Axelrod had all sorts of conflicts of interest in the course of, of rolling Nancy Pelosi on, on billions of dollars of taxpayer money that the pharmaceutical industry wanted. What we really Eric see... Eric Holder. Exactly. And, and Eric Holder's well, firm in representing it, the, you know, the terrorists in Guantanamo exactly. Bay. Now we, he's our attorney general. We see a case. situation here where we were promised you know, a change election, some, somebody who would be post-partisan, someone who would come to this uh, job with uh, a, an amount of respect for the office. Instead, what we see is sort of typical Chicago cronyism at work all the way to the highest levels of government, crossing the street to go and have meetings with the lobbyists in the caribou coffee. So that's as, much That's more really yeah. where, where is, yeah, where's, where's your level of outreach here, Andrew? I mean, Amy brings up the, or we've talked about now, the caribou coffee lobbyist meetings to stay off the books. Is this a little worse than that for you? Not it, as bad? Where are you? It, there's kind of a cloud of smug with the way the way Obama looks at the way other people make money and the way they have engaged or managed their political business. There, there's sort of this smugness that comes with it, but that when they go right ahead and do everything that they've complained about, it's sort of like Pluff kind of comes across to me as a kind of a smug kind of guy. So when, when these people are out there leading with their chin about how everybody lecturing everybody in the finger wagging, and then it turns out they're doing it, it almost makes you want to be angry at them even more. Jim, I read, Jim, I read your column on this, and you, know, you made it clear that you don't think that this should be made illegal. You think that could cause more problems than it solves. But, I mean, wh where would you fall on that issue? I mean, if you're, should they strengthen some of the regulations for people in government service so they can't do this? Or are you just outside of government, you're worried about this? And where would you draw the lines? Well, every time we've tried to regulate these sorts of things, you end up seeing various exceptions or ways of working around the rules. Uh, you know, obviously you mentioned earlier the exemptions that the Obama administration has for lobbyists. No lobbyist will work in my White House, except for this guy, but because I've decided he's important. Uh, one of my all-time favorites is when Tom Daschle, who was supposed to be the uh, Commerce Secretary in the Obama administration, it came up that he was a lobbyist. And he said, no, 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 I am not a lobbyist. I am not a registered lobbyist. He simply provides strategic advice to a law firm right. that does lobbying. Right. <laughs> you know, to, when you get into these kinds of hair splitting, people, you know, people who work in government believe that they are entitled to a very lucrative career after they leave government. As a result of that, I, I really don't think any law is going to be able to stop that. People are always going to try to figure that out. So if you really want less uh, influence peddling and people trying to cash in on their government service, make government smaller. You know, Buck, what I thought it, was uh, that jumped out at me that was far more problematic is that the former campaign manager in 2008, who we know is running the campaign for 2012, that his desk is just steps from the Oval Office and that he's on the taxpayer dime doing campaign work when he should really be working for the people. Something else that we should probably be looking into.